please. You imitated me before, now you're gonna do what you wanna do, but I'm gonna give you the cue, and these cues are gonna be emotional words. And in your best way, I want you to really try to focus on the emotion, and I want you to show that emotion, how it looks in your body, your face, your posture. What's it look like to be incredibly depressed? Come on, show me depression. Incredibly depressed. Right. So what happens? Generally, your shoulders cave in. Your face goes down. You don't want to look at anybody. You don't want to hear what they have to say. Your breathing may get shallow. She had a grimace on her face, which was really great. <laughs> what was that? I said I'm good at that part. <laughs> was the great. So now here's what I want to show you about. Here's what I want to show you about this emotion and this power that you have in your body. So I want you to get into that depressed position. Now when I clap my hand, I want you to become the most powerful thing in the world. Okay, get depressed. <laughs> You're not depressed enough. <laughs> depressed. I'm the best. Yeah! Yeah! Come on! <laughs> All right. You see how you just went from a bad state to a good state? Yep. You can do that any time in your life that you need to. Awesome. Just kind of remember that. You know, in sports, you always see you don't have to even put on the sound. You see who got the point or or who won is it's universal where they raise up their hands, right? Right. right. And the modern soccer, any type of sport, yeah. and it's universal. Yeah. And it's universal because it's a celebration. And one of the things that I believe in in life is celebrating yourself and applauding yourselves. Okay? Because that's real important. Please. And I think that's why we have fear, because we do not celebrate ourselves. I'm gonna tell you that. As old as I am, I do have my own business. I've had to struggle through what you're talking about right now, and I just landed here, and I'm really glad to be here because I've gone through all this stuff to, in order to not be with fear. But sometimes, when you, if without fear, it doesn't motivate you though. At the same time, but if you can overcome the fear of the motive, it, it, it seems to motivate you. It's a, a do or die moment. Mm -hmm. But um, fear is important to success that's all i'm going to say right now but if you once you get to that point you can you can you can work with your fear and that's where i'm at at my old age working with my fear <laughs> and because i have to go out and sell too and i'm an empty nester now okay so i was i was able to cover myself with the children and the activities and everything like that I started a business at zero dollars and zero cents. It was my coverage. You know, I was always a brand, a brand waiting to happen. Uh -huh. Okay, and that is very fearful because it's like, where am I gonna get money from? I started this business where now that they're gone, I have to take it to make money now. Okay, so I mean, again, that's really weird, but it's the it's the it's the truth. Yeah, no, there's no it's question about it. You know, if, if there's no question about it, because if there wasn't fear, we like I said yeah. before, we, we wouldn't be here. Okay, right. So you know, and, or we wouldn't want to have our own business or something inside of us. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. And, and, and the interesting again, thing, too, at least it does for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Everybody else, everybody's life is different. And, and I think it works like that for a lot of people and most people, quite frankly. Yeah. But you know, if you, if you take a look at things like, you know, what is low-grade depression? You know, this is something that most of this country suffers from. We don't know it, but it's, it's an epidemic. It's because we're not searching for passions. We're not searching for our passions. The educational system is not allowing us to do that. I like to think of the educational system, at least up until, you know, the end of high school and perhaps college as well, is based on Henry D. Ford's model of tape. It's an assembly line. You start them in kindergarten, they do well, you stamp them on the tushy, and they go on the assembly line. Right. They go through high school, you stamp them on the tushy, they are not prepared for college, but they go on to college. <laughs> and no one has ever told them why they should look for something in their lives. Just study, and you'll figure it out. Come on. You know, this is, this is all about changing the world, but I've spoken too much.
So I just want to say this. I, I, I'd like somebody to volunteer to get up and tell a story. You got a pitch, you want to pitch your business, or you want to tell a story like the one that you just said. But I want you to remember three things. Any story, any pitch has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's like a play, it's like a book, it's like a movie, it's like a song. Beginning, middle, and end. And in the event that you're going to pitch something, make sure that that ending leads in to a call to action. And one of the tips I'm going to give you before you start is that, let's say I'm a financial expert. I'm not going to, I would volunteer to come up, and I would not just say, hi, my name is Peter Cummings, I'm a financial expert, and let me tell you what I do. I would say, hi, I'm Peter Cummings. How many of you would like to make an extra $100,000 a year? Raise your hands. Can come you on, raise your hands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just found my audience. Most people that didn't raise their hands, Maybe they got the money already. Beginning, middle, and end. And then what's going to happen is you'll get some feedback from me, and I like feedback from the room as well. And the feedback should be about the three Bs. How was their verbal? Did they tell the story? Did they share their content? How was their vocal? Did they really get it across? Were they emotional when they had to be emotional? And how did they look when they did it? Anyone? Gentlemen, ladies and germs, welcome to Vanessa. Hi, everybody. I am Vanessa Label, and I founded Choice MD. So let me just start off with this. I think everybody can agree that finding healthcare resources is a frustrating task, right? Where do you find doctors? Where do you find things for schools, special schools for kids with special needs? I mean, all of that stuff becomes an overwhelming task. And I know this because 18 years ago, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I was thrusted into this world where I was told that I had a genetic disability that could cause anything from blindness to paralysis and the worst case scenario of death, right? So at 21 years of age, I had to find all of these resources. And what I found in my journey is that the most successful thing to become in this journey, in this health journey that I have been living for the rest of my life, was connecting with all the right resources. And I didn't have a place to do it. So I decided to take the task on myself. And what I did is I created this platform that connects people to all the resources within their community. So within our directory, we have um, directories for doctors, medical facilities, dentists, anything that you can think of that's healthcare related is on our site. On top of that, because what happens in the healthcare world is that doctors treat the symptoms, they treat the problem, and then that's about it, right? The patient is left there with the mental anguish of dealing with this problem. So what I decided to incorporate is to work alongside the nonprofit organizations and partner with them so that I can provide this platform to connect patients to the resources that they need. So along with that, we have in our calendar of events, we have support groups, we have seminars, we have a way for people to connect with people that are going through the same problems to give them a sense of security, a sense of belonging, and also to answer questions that maybe physicians can't answer because they're not going through those problems. They don't quite understand it. From there, in my journey, after 18 years of living with this, it's, I don't want to know what my symptoms are because I know them better than WebMD can tell me or any of the other websites, right? I want to know what the latest research is. I want to know what's going on and what's up and coming. What's going to give me hope for the future? So what we do is we take these articles from medical journals and we rewrite them in terms that people can understand what is going on in the medical world to give them hope for the future. And that is my idea behind Choice MD. I hope that everybody, and it's a site that really truly I've works seen, for I've everybody. Seen I've seen Choice MD. Yes, I mean, we are working I, hard. I, I'm, I'm, I'm my, um, email, I think we're trying to get seen on the side here, popping up like an advertisement. I will say this, I'm proud to say that we're four months new. So seeing that you're saying yeah, that I have an amazing team that's out there marketing this, trying to get the community involved, but that's where we're at right now. So I hope that everybody visits Choice MD. Like us on social media, Facebook, Instagram. We have all the pages, and we'll keep you up to date with the latest current news of what's going on in your community. Fantastic. She did it all. She did it all, right? Based on the three of these. 
she, she has her content down. She knows something. And you know what? I almost got tears listening to yeah. your early story. And I can tell from your voice. Uh, and that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. You capture the audience with that emotion. That's the adrenaline part. And not only that, but now you have a solution. Was there anything else? Anybody want to say anything? Think of she, 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 she used her uh, verbal mannerisms to make your points in a very effective way. And and the the flow um, had a good structure from the introduction to the end. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I think there was a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I just learned it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking point. notes, I was formulating the, the talk. You know, the other interesting thing, just as a sideline, is that, you know, I'm, I, I, like all of us, we go to doctors, and the doctors are doctors, and uh, it's just interesting to know, uh, as long as I'm on a diatribe about education, um, I don't know of any doctors that have ever taken a course and had to talk to your patient. And if there is one, I'd love to know about it. Because, you know, it's a very difficult thing to do. You know, you, you, they have your life in, in their hands. But what you have done, is you have given the power to the people that have been through the experience to be able to share those testimonials, their problems, their successes. That is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having like a conversation. I felt like we were just like one on one. Thank you. Yeah, right? Thank you. Cool. I appreciate the feedback. Anyone else? I just came in, but I'll tell you one <laughs> word which can define or definitely apply to this: the genuineness. Genuine. Because. Sometimes you can see whether it is artificial, it is pitch, but it is really genuine. And I think that derived because of your personal experience. I mean, that definitely made it like so genuine. I mean, I know if I would have heard about your assembly, I probably would not go there. But now the way that you have described it, I'm more compelled to definitely go and that. I'm not typing here because I don't want to be disrespectful to the audience, but I think. <laughs> no, that's okay. You know, one of the things that's uh, in my opinion, is really great about the Venture Cafe is that people come to learn from one another. Yeah. Uh, and I came from New York City. There's nothing like that. So. I'm just going to say that what my pitch is, has matured. Like, like I think when you start to learn how to speak, because I have to do presentations for a living, and I am the biggest scary cat in the whole wide world. Come on, come on. No, 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 I'm not going up there. No, no, no. But I'm just saying that I have had to. I think my biggest challenge was when I really started learning how to speak, which helped my career. I was president, I don't know how I got this position, in a missionary league for the church I belonged to. I had to go to these churches, rally these women, and get them involved. So I was in charge of five churches in the community that I would have to rally them to be motivated. Here I am, the most scaredy cat person in the whole wide world, going up there, five churches, people from all over the place, never that I've met in my life, and speak about what we did as a mission. And I believe that really helped my career a lot. I'm an interior designer, I do have my own business, and I started my business from zero dollars and zero cents. Okay, I am an empty nester now, like right now, and that's what I was telling you, I covered myself with my children doing all the stuff, but now that I'm they're gone. I have no backup. I don't have the backup crew, okay? So I'm out there all alone trying to sell myself now. And that is where I'm at right now. But what I want to add is that I, I believe as we start learning to public speak, we need to, this is what I'm thinking right now, take it in small steps because you're not, like she's, she knows her stuff in and out, very mature, and he got it, genuine. But when you're first starting, you may not know everything. So you're going to have to find a way to communicate with the little bit you got. That's good. Okay, the little bit that you got, you got to start somewhere. The other thing you should that's remember. All, and that's how I've, yeah. how I've got to be. And, and what I take out of that is, first of all, everything that happens is baby mm -hmm. steps. Thanks. You know, you don't become a great basketball player or one player or whatever it is, you know, overnight. Nobody has an overnight story. Right, it's not. Um, and, and the other thing, too, is that you, you are not alone. I'll be there for you anytime you want. <laughs> and the other thing, too, is really important about pitching if you've got your business or you're just trying to tell a story to somebody. A pitch has to be pliable. It can't just be a script. 
Because, you know, you started asking questions about, well, what do you do when people don't understand what you're saying? They look like they're, you know, they're in space somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. That's what people want to do. They want to be in space. They don't want to hear you. Nobody wants to be in the meeting. They don't give a damn about you. How do you know? So you've got to care about yourself. And you've got to get them to care about you, too. So the beginning, the middle, and the end becomes really, really important. And the idea of babies 